Hey guys, we're back again to do another tutorial on um, something that we've been using over the last year that we've been really happy with. Uh, this time we're gonna be talking about audio instead of lighting. So what we're doing, as the title of the video says, is we are sending our Ableton tracks to our console um, via Dante using the Dante sound card and the Dante controller. So uh, down on the stage, our drum set down there, we've got a little iMac that's running Ableton. All the tracks are coming up via uh, Cat5 coming up to the console. So we'll start up here and then we'll head down there. Uh, first things first at the console, um, you need to make sure you're going into some sort of a network switch for us. We just have uh, just this little Netgear switch that's worked fine for us. Setup is fairly simple for us. The biggest thing that we needed to do was to figure out how many Dante channels we wanted to send um, from the stage and then how, uh, where we were gonna allocate those channels at. Um, so over here we actually have, or we keep a little cheat sheet um, from the stage of where our patching needs to go in case, you know, we ever had uh, the, the council file blow out and we lost it, you know, and all of our backup files were gone and everything. We just have a quick way to access it. We also have, we've never had to use this in the last year that we've been running, but we still keep a couple DIs and uh, we still keep our analog um pathway set up just in case dante ever fails we can still run our tracks just in a more simplified so we just keep um I, I keep this analog backup patch for just in case if we need to move things back but again we've never had to it's been so solid i couldn't imagine going back to running tracks the way that we were before uh so for us um i'm gonna go into my dante patch um these are our 64 channels. Um, you know, every console is different for the CL5. Um, the CL5 can only manage 64 channels of Dante uh, at a time. Um, so this is our layout for our contemporary server. So for us, we are going to be using um, Dante 45 through Dante 53. Um, where you see those question marks, I'll talk about that in just a little bit. So. Um, when I went through and uh, first set this up, I realized that I had a lot of, just from over the years of just adding things, and I had to go through and completely clean out uh, our Dante input patch and just make sure everything was, uh, we, we only were using what we actually needed to make sure I could clear enough space for what we wanted to do with Ableton. So um, that's where you'll need to start, is make sure you've got the amount of Dante channels available that you want to send, whether that's four channels or that's 16 channels. Um, so you'll need to start there. That's basically it for the console, um, is just getting the Dante, the available Dante channels, and then just making sure you're tied into a switch. We'll go down um, and I'll show you how we actually got everything talking and then we'll come back up to finish up to, to show you where we have things patched up here. All right, so here is our uh, drum riser here. You can see um, we've got our trigger pad hooked up. Um, computer here is on a rack that we're using for one of our Kempers. And then here is our analog rig that we were using um, before we actually started using Dante. We were coming uh, Firewire, or not Firewire, excuse me, USB down to this uh, Focusrite Scarlet that has six um, outputs. Uh, so USB goes in the back and then it's got six outputs on it. So we were running uh, four of them uh, currently into this uh, PCD IQ, which is basically a rack mounted uh, uh, DI that gives you either four st stereo channels or eight mono channels. So which is awesome because before we just had direct boxes kind of lined up on the floor, but you still need, you need all these quarter inches, you need all the XLRs, um, you need more snake channels. It was a, just um, a mess and a pain and every once in a while, you know, cables go bad and you got a quarter inch that dies somewhere. So we still keep it in line just in case, um, like I showed you that uh, cheat sheet up at the console. If Dante were to ever go down, um, uh, before service started, we could we could flip over really quick back to this. We've got Ableton here uh, right now um, to to get back to the switch. So I showed you we've got uh, behind the CL5, we've got that um, Netgear uh, network switch. 
um, that our Ableton machine is running into. So right now we're just running an Ethernet Cat5 jack or a Cat5 cable out of the console, and there is just a jack uh, kind of right there uh, on the wall that the Cat5 cable runs back to. That goes all the way up to the switch and connects in there. As far as the computer goes, we've got three programs. Um, we've got obviously Ableton, and then there are two programs that you need to get from um, uh, Dante. One of them is free and one of them requires a license. So the first one that you have to get is the Dante Virtual Sound Card. This is the one that requires a license. The license key gives you um, access to the Dante Virtual Sound Card and that's what really makes all this run. So that's what you'll first download. You first install the Dante Virtual Sound Card. Um, the first menu is gonna be a licensing, uh, this licensing menu, and it's gonna have uh, two empty boxes. One is gonna be the company name um, or organization name, and then it's gonna have a big empty box for like a, like a 24 character license code that you would put in. Once you activate that, uh, you're gonna uh, get this menu here. Um, the only thing that we adjusted, as far as latency, we didn't have to adjust that at all. There's, there's some scenarios where if you were using multiple machines and you had a different Dante machine that was actually the clock for all your other computers, you might have some latency issue. We haven't had that here. Uh, and we've never messed with the um, network interface. And in fact, I think for us, there's not even anything to change. So the only thing we adjusted was uh, you, can, um, you can use up to 64 channels of Dante. Like I said, at the upstairs at the console, we are only using nine right now. Um, for us, that would just be impractical. And we probably won't even ever use 16, but we wanted to have uh, availability for what, we, what we've got. So right now we've just got 16 by 16. I guess we could select 64 by 64, but I was worried about processing of, would Dante have to work harder? Would Ableton have to work harder? Would, more potential for a crash so that's why i didn't just max out the audio channels for us i'm just using what's the bare minimum we can get away with uh just to kind of save on horsepower from there you hit start and now dante is up and running but one more piece of program you need to get before it will talk to ableton is uh, the dante controller here um, this is just a free download on um, dante's website uh, to install and will work on mac or windows um, once you install it and you've got everything turned on, um, you're going to see everything. You should see everything on your, um, audio network. So right here, we've got the iMac, we've got our CO5, which is our console and our three Rio snake racks. So these are three digital snakes that are up in our infrastructure closet that everything ties back into. Um, so this is where we'll, we will actually manage the Dante patch that we saw up at the board. Up at the board, I showed you we were using channels 45 through, I think, 53. This is where uh, you make that patch happen, and it's really simple. So first, we want to go to our receiver. So our CL5 is what's going to receive all the channels. So we're going to blow that up here, um, and you can see. So these are our channels over here. You've got, you know, your channels 1 through 64. And then on the right side is what's actually transmitting. So right now, um, 1 through 30 is... or yeah, 30 is coming from Rio 1, uh, which is most of our band instruments, um, you know, guitar, drums, all that. So we'll, we'll keep going down. We've got other stuff coming in our other reels, but here we go uh, is what I want to show you here. Here on the iMac here is our nine channels. So we've got 45 through 53. So to actually route these, you would explode out your transmitter view. And now we've got our 16 channels of Dante that we've got available. Really simple. So from here, you're literally just clicking on a mouse. You're finding what, what Dante channel you want it to go to and just go down. So we just, one through nine for us, started at 45. Um, and then once you're done, you can collapse these menus. And then you would just go to file and save. For us, um, when I go to load the preset, I just saved it as Ableton patch. I just wanted to keep it really simple. Didn't want to do a cryptic name. Uh, and that's it for Dante controller. That's really all there is. It's really simple. Um, back with the sound card, when you once you launch the sound card and you hit start on it, it's going to run until you actually hit stop or the computer shuts down. So for that, you can actually exit out. But with the Dante controller, you can't exit out of it. The window needs to stay uh, open. So all we do is we just keep it in the background, just click uh, Ableton anywhere. 
So the last step, and we are almost there, is then going into, sorry, I'm jumping around on the drum throne here. Uh, you would go into preferences. Second tab is your audio. And then over here, we've got audio output. So over here, we've got built in, that's your headphone jack. Then we've got our Scarlet, which is what we keep in line. And then here we go, virtual sound card. Now we've got uh, our virtual sound card set as our primary audio output interface. The last thing you need to do, there are some sample rates and some different things in here. Honestly, we kept all of this default. There might be a reason why uh, on your particular system you would need to change some of those. That's You're gonna have to do some digging into that, but for us, all of that we left default. The last thing that you'll need to do is output config. This just, um, this is where you tell um, uh, Ableton what channels it actually has access to on the um, on your Dante channels and then how you want those available. You can actually set it so you only want them to show up as stereo pairs or you only want them to show up as mono. We actually use some mono, some stereo, so we, we just highlight everything. And if you don't highlight those, if you and by highlighting, just click on them. Uh, if you don't highlight them, they won't show up in Ableton. And if I remember correctly, default, uh, they will all be um, deselected to start with. So just make sure you go into that output config. Again, that is right here, and make sure they're all selected. All right, so we're ready to uh, patch these channels in Ableton. Um, we've got a little cheat sheet right here that you can see, uh, master left, master right, what, you know, here's our channel, here's what's going into the channel, channel five, lead guitar, six piano, you guys can see that. So the reason why we have a cheat sheet there is our worship director um, creates all of this in his office on his iMac there, and we don't have virtual sound card license there, so it's only going to see the two outputs for his headphone jack. Uh, so once he brings the file out here, he just has to go through and adjust the patch in his file. Um, so over here, we've got our channels, um, you know, however you guys have them laid out with, uh, with our songs. These are, this was a set from this last weekend. Um, one of the things our worship uh, director has done as well is he just keeps all of these channels set to kind of, these are default, this is his default template that he always works off of. And then anytime he, every week when he goes to update the set, um, he, he's already got channels ready to go that, that on this computer store the patch. Um, so it just makes it a little bit quicker for him to dump, dump in files. He's not recreating a show file every weekend. Um, this is what he works off of every week. He just kind of clears out the songs every week. And then when he adds in the new songs, just puts them under the respective channel. To get into the patch, the first place you want to start is over to the right. Um, I'm not going to go too into depth to this because this isn't an Ableton tutorial. You guys probably know Ableton. Uh, for us, we're using, we're still keeping master out on one and two, and you can see it's one and two stereo paired. Um, and again, for us, there are things that we wanted individual channels of, and then there's other things that are in the tracks that it just made sense to kind of keep them clustered together. We just didn't need that many channels taken up on our console. Um, of every little thing that comes through Ableton. So we still use the master track for some of it. And then for us, we um, our cues out are going out on eight. Um, and for us, we actually use uh, clicking cues down the same channel. We thought about separating those and putting on different channels, and maybe someday we will, but we just found that that kind of overcomplicates things. We, we, we work really hard to, to get those levels right in Ableton. So it's a really good balance between click and cues. But for us, those go down the same channel. So to actually get into um, your patching, so I'll just start with uh, the one I'll show you is click track here. Um, when you get down to your channel, it's going to look like this to start off with this audio master. Uh, what do we got here? So we have acoustic guitar. He doesn't have anything in there, but we'll use that as, a, as our example. So that's a good example. So um, we want acoustic guitar to be on on four. Um, so what you, all you need to do is for your audio two, change this to external output. And then from there, you get to your second drop down box that's now available. That gives you all your stereo channels and all your mono channels. So I'm just gonna change this over to four. And now it's set to four. So when we, we don't have anything in there now, but if we had a song where we wanted some canned acoustic, um, that would come down that channel. So that's 
that really is it for Ableton. Uh, we'll go back up to the console and finish up the patching and, and that should be All it. All right, so we're back for our uh, the last portion here. Try to get this where you can see it. Uh, so patching these on the console, I, I'm just gonna cover this really quick because again, you know, you guys know how to use a CL5 if you're watching this. Um, I'm just gonna show you how we have it set up. So for us, when I go over to my patch here, um, I'm gonna find my tracks and I'm gonna go down to uh, my lower channels here. And then we've got um, 43 and 44, or excuse me, 45 and 46 are what we have coming in on our master. So 45, 46 are our master channels. So that's how we have those laid out. Um, so we, you can see 45 and 46. So you'll notice the question marks. Um, I have not been able to figure that out yet. If I click on another channel, usually those uh, numbers indicate what real rack you're in. <clears throat> the first three numbers indicate the real rack. The second numbers indicate what channel on the real rack. So for whatever reason doing this, uh, Dante shows up as all question marks. I cannot figure out why that is, but it doesn't really hurt us here. Um, it's just the way that it shows up. So when I go to my next fader bank here, uh, these are the other channels that we've got coming in, just Ableton Bass, Ableton Acoustic, um, you get it. So that's how we have it laid out. Again, everything has its own patch here, and that just corresponds. This Again, this is kind of why we keep this cheat sheet up here, is so we know where uh, things are going to lay out. Um, and from here... And now we have individual channels of the tracks that we want to mix on, gives us more flexibility. And uh, most importantly for us, it's, it's a really uh, streamlined system that uh, requires a lot less moving parts, a lot less points of failure. Um, and again, Dante has been solid in the year we've been using it. I don't think we've had a single Sunday come up where we've had to go back to the uh, backup uh, the analog because Dante wasn't working. It's It's been a very stable platform for us. So uh, this was longer than what I thought it was going to be. I tried to make it, I tried to cut it up and make it a little bit shorter, but um, my apologies for that. I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, just drop them below and I will try to answer those as best as I can. Thanks guys.